Goeiemorgen gratens. Vandag gaan ons bykie kyk spesifiek na hoe jy die internet kan gebruik om inlichting te kry. Ons het over reeds hier gepraat in Los Exiles. Vandag gaan ek vir jou paar videos wees wat vir jou net so paar extra tips gaan gee oor hoe jy die internet kan gebruik om meer inlichting te kry en hoe om dan na door die inlichting te kyk. Ons gaan dan volgende keer Specifiek ook kyk na die kwaliteit van die inlichting en hoe jy dan door die inlichting kan stoor. Nou ouwens, ek is seker jy het al ten die tijd gehoor dat jy van nou af een paar opdrachtjes elke week gaan doen vir elke vak so ons in die einde van die tweede kwartaal vir jylle rapport kan gee en waarom punte gaan tel vir hierdie rapport. So hierdie opdrachtjes sal al reeds vir jou beskikbaar wees van volgende week af. In tussentijd van huiswerk wil ek hier met asjeblief vir my module 2.3 se infovraagies doen. Ek sal hier die infovraagies weer vir julle ook op die WhatsApp groep sit, saam met die vorige vraagies se huiswerk antwoorde. Goed, kom ons kyk hoe kan die internet ons help om inlichting te kry en dat jy die rechte inlichting kan gebruik om jou verder te help. Hierdie video's gaan ook vir jou spesifiek verduidelik, waar begin ons? Wat is die internet? Hoe gebruik ons die internet? En hoe is die rechte manier om inlichting van die internet af te trak? Genie dit! Come on in, Wendy. It's good to see you, dear. Great to see you too, Grandma. Show me this new computer you just had set up. This is very nice. You will be able to access so much information and visit a variety of websites. It will keep you so busy. You may not even have enough time to knit anymore. Oh, I don't know about that. I just hope it isn't too difficult to access the World Wide Web. Come to think of it, I am familiar with the term World Wide Web, but I don't exactly know what it means. Can you describe to me in simple terms? Of course. The World Wide Web, commonly referred to as the Web, is a system of interlinked hypertext documents accessed through the Internet. It enables the retrieval and display of text and media to your computer. Who invented the web? The World Wide Web was developed by Tim Berners-Lee in 1991. It began as a project at the European Particle Physics Laboratory referred to as CERN. Berners-Lee, being familiar with hypertext or linked words within text used to jump to other text or documents, proposed the idea of creating a global hypertext system. This system would allow individuals to link their documents together to create a web of interconnected documents. He named his system the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web's full potential was not realized until Mark Andreessen, an undergraduate student at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications at the University of Illinois, realized the vast public potential the web had. His vision was to go beyond text and create hypermedia. This included linking graphics, sounds, and video elements. The first graphical web browser was born. It was called NCSA Mosaic. With this development, the internet spread rapidly into homes, businesses, and higher education institutions. You know a lot about how the web was created. How does it actually function? The World Wide Web is based on several different technologies that make it possible for users to locate and share information through the internet. These include web browsers, hypertext markup language, and hypertext transfer protocol. To access web pages, you must use a web browser, usually referred to as a browser. Web browsers are programs that display text, data, pictures, animation, and video on the internet. Web browsers provide the software interface that enables you to use your mouse to click hyperlinked resources on the World Wide Web. Web browsers were initially only used for surfing the web. They are now more universal and allow users to do many more tasks, including conducting searches, emailing, transferring multimedia files, participating in discussion groups, and much more. Some examples of commonly used web browsers are Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, and Safari. Grandma, you have Internet Explorer already installed on your computer. You will double-click the icon to launch Internet Explorer. You are now connected to the World Wide Web. That was easy. Now how do I find the Publishers Clearinghouse website? You can either conduct a search or type the Uniform Resource Locator URL into the address bar. To conduct a search, click in the web search box.
type Publishers Clearinghouse and click Search. Your search will return a listing of results. The website you want will most likely be listed at the top. Click on the hyperlink of the result that you want and you will be directed to the Publishers Clearinghouse website. Grandma, did you know that websites are a collection of web pages? Each website has a home page. The home page is the first page of a website in which you are taken to as a starting point. From there you can access other content. You are now on the Publishers Clearinghouse home page. You can click the other links to access information about Publishers Clearinghouse or to enter their sweepstakes. No, Wendy, I didn't know that. The next technology that plays an integral role in the operation of the web is hypertext markup language. Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML, is a programming tool that uses hypertext to establish dynamic links to other documents. It is known as the web's programming language, and it provides a general structure for creating web pages. If you wanted to create your own website, you would use HTML. HTML allows web page developers to create hyperlinks, and these are the clickable images or words on the web page. Clicking on a hyperlink will take you to another web page or a file specified by that link. Then we have Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. HTTP provides the rules which allow requests and file transmissions to occur between web browsers and web servers. HTTP is a protocol used by the web which dictates how messages are formatted and transmitted. When you type in a URL to your web browser, the HTTP protocol command is sent to the web server and instructs it to retrieve the desired web page. Hypertext seems to be the key word when we discuss the web. That's a good observation, Grandma. Hypertext is a term we frequently hear because it really is the whole basis of the web. Another commonly used term that is important to know is File Transfer Protocol, or FTP. It is an internet protocol used for retrieving and transferring files from a remote computer. FTP relies on the TCP IP protocols to transfer files. It is often used to download programs and files from one computer to another. You can use a web browser to connect to an FTP address just like you would to an HTTP address. Wendy, you've been so helpful. I think I understand now the main concepts behind the World Wide Web, or Global System of Interlinked Hypertext Documents Access Through the Internet. Web browsers provide the software interface that enables us to use our mouse to click hyperlinked resources on the World Wide Web. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, otherwise known as HTTP, is the protocol which enables requests and file transmissions to occur between web browsers and web servers. In the event I need to transfer files from one computer to another via the Internet, I can use File Transfer Protocol, otherwise known as FTP. I think with a little practice I'll be able to surf the web easily. Maybe I can even find an online knitting group to join. <laughs> Grandma, it sounds like you got it. Glad I could be of assistance. What do you do when you have a question or need to locate information on a topic? If you are like most people, you turn to the Internet or more specifically the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is a system of interlinked hypertext documents accessed through the Internet and provides many resources and search tools. These search tools enable you to locate a vast amount of information quickly and conveniently. The World Wide Web has generated a large number of search engines. A search engine is a program that enables users to locate specific websites of information on the Internet based on keywords. Keywords are the descriptive terms used to find relevant information. Abby wishes to locate information on obedience training for the new puppy she just brought home. She uses her favorite search engine, Google. Other search engines that can be used are Yahoo, Bing, AOL, and Ask.com. Abby enters the keywords dog training into her search engine. Abby could also conduct her search from a web portal. A web portal is a site that is used as a launching point for entering the web. A portal includes a web directory and search engine, as well as other useful features such as shopping directories, email, file storage, games, and chat rooms. Many search engines are also web portals. Some web portals commonly used today are Yahoo, AOL, and MSN. Quite often you will set your browser to open to the home page of a portal. Search engines have three main components, the search form, database, and robot. The search form is the component you will be most familiar with. The search form is the interface in which you type a word or phrase you wish to search. It is comprised of a text box and a submit button. 
The search form is where Abby will enter the keywords dog training. The keywords typed into the search engine are sent to the server that searches the database. Remember that a server is a computer connected directly to the internet in which data can be stored and accessed. A database is an organized collection of information that can be accessed, managed, and updated. The results page of a web search will display information that has been accessed from the database. The database is populated with information gathered from a robot. A robot, also called a bot, crawler, or spider, is used to navigate the web by following hyperlinks for the purpose of indexing web content and storing web pages. A bot or spider crawls around the web looking for new pages and updates to add to the search engine's index. The spider will collect meta tag keywords and descriptions to add to the database. Meta tags are part of the HTML code of a web page. They provide specific information about the web page to the browser. However, meta tags cannot be seen when you access the web page. Their purpose is to serve as informants to the spiders. Meta tags are used by search engines to index web pages. The index stores all of the information collected by the spider so that it can be found as quickly as possible. Large search engines will likely have multiple spiders working simultaneously. These spiders collect and index hundreds of millions of web pages in order to respond to the millions of searches performed each day. Abby's search compiles a list of information in Uniform Resource Locators, or URLs, for web pages that meet the criteria specified. This list is called the Results Set. The result set often contains the link to each page, page title, description, and even the first few lines of text of the page. The search is complete when the search engine results is sent to the browser and displayed on the monitor. When you conduct a web search, you are querying the index. Your query could be a single word, a phrase, or even a sentence. Building a complex search will require the use of search operators or Boolean logic operators. Boolean logic operators enable you to narrow or broaden your search to find the most relevant information. Boolean logic was named after George Boole, a 19th century mathematician. Boolean logic consists of three logical operators, AND, OR, and NOT. The AND operator is used to narrow your search by joining multiple search terms. The search engine will return results that include all keywords. The AND operator is often used for linking different concepts. An example is house training and tricks. Only records containing both house training and tricks would be retrieved. The OR operator is used to broaden your search. The OR operator will locate documents that contain at least one of the keywords specified. It is useful when you have similar words to describe the same topic. An example is dog or canine. The NOT operator is used to exclude a specific word from a search. Documents containing the specified keyword will be ignored. The potential problem with this is results may become too narrow and valuable documents may be skipped. An example is dog breeds, not Yorkshire Terrier. The next time you conduct a search on the web, keep in mind everything that goes on behind the scenes. You will likely enter the web through a web portal or site used as a launching point that contains diversified information and resources. The portal will include a search engine or program that enables you to locate specific websites of information on the internet. Every search engine will include three components, a robot, database, and search form. They work together to obtain information about web pages, store the information, provide the interface to facilitate the search, and display the results of the search. The search form provides the interface that enables you to enter your keywords. The database is an organized collection of information that is searched in order to find the most relevant results. The robot or spider navigates the web by following hyperlinks and collecting information from meta tags for the purpose of indexing web content and storing web pages. Complex web searches can be more efficient when Boolean logic operators are used. Boolean operators are used to narrow or widen search results using AND, OR, and NOT. We've established that information system is the combining of users, technology, and processes to complete a specific goal. A stakeholder isn't only a user, but is someone who has any type of interest in a particular process. These people utilize hardware and software, typically in a network format, to process raw data into usable information. Data is one piece of a record. Individually, some of your data might be your first name, middle name, last name, address, city, state, zip, phone number, and an occupation. When put together, we see a record. 
Consider a global business with nearly 100,000 employees. If we were to put each bit of data on index cards and toss it in a room, we'd have a lot of cards, but could you interpret and use that data? Probably not. What we would have is a great start to a bonfire. But if each person's data was compiled as a record, and those records processed into an employee list, we would now have usable information or a collection of related records. The old way would have been handwritten or typed index cards filed in many boxes alphabetically. The list would have then been typed and photocopied for distribution. Technology has made that process just a little faster. We now use keyboards, scanners, and microphones to input data into a system. The system unit contains components which house the software that processes the data into information. The components of the system you can physically touch, the system unit, tower, desktop, laptop, internal devices, and peripheral devices, such as keyboards and monitors, are called hardware. It is important to remember that basic definition. Hardware are the parts of the computer that are tangible and can be touched. Specifics of peripheral devices are provided in many other ways, but think of them as hardware that surrounds the system unit. Hint, your peripheral vision is what lets you see out of the sides or corners of your eyes. These peripheral devices may be connected by wired or wireless technology to the system unit. Peripherals communicate with the interior components of the system unit via installed software. Software itself is intangible and can't be touched physically. That particular type of software is the operating system software. Now software as a general term is the set of instructions written to direct the computer to execute specific tasks. Operating system software is typically written for a specific type of computer. The operating system, or just system software, instructs the hardware to get moving when the power is turned on or the mouse move deactivating a sleep mode. It interprets instructions from application software to utilize peripherals and or storage devices. An example is Microsoft Windows 7 for a PC-based computer or Mac OS X for a Macintosh. Microsoft is semi-unique and may produce not only operating system software, but application software as well. Application software, or productivity software, is a set of instructions installed in a computing device that lets us do something. There are thousands of software programs out there, but a few examples you may be familiar with are iTunes, Microsoft Word, and Adobe Reader. Both application and system software are sold to individual users, however there are versions that can be used in a network environment. A computer network is a grouping of computer stations connected in some manner that allows for sharing of resources. You may have a wireless network at home that lets you share internet connection, printers, or even storage devices. This same concept can be created, many times larger, using wired technology in businesses ranging in size and physical location. When we start with one little piece, it is truly amazing how far we can go to connect many pieces together. The individual data being processed through the use of hardware and software and shared through network connection has allowed us to utilize more information in less time. Abby is working on creating a speech for her government class. She knows that she can do research on the internet, but she isn't sure where to begin. She tries asking friends on Socialbook and Beaker, her two favorite social networking sites, but she doesn't get the information she needs. How can Abby research her speech using the internet? You may know more than Abby about researching. For example, you probably know that researching online is very different from casual browsing. Researching on the internet is far more focused and has a specific purpose. In this lesson, you will learn about how to use search engines to conduct online research. Researching on the internet can be an intimidating task. The World Wide Web is endless, so who knows where to start? First, let's talk about the different types of search engines that are available and how you can use a search engine to help with your research. A search engine is a program that searches for words and phrases in documents, most often in online articles and resources. Abby can start researching her topic using a large search engine to give her a direction with her speech. In general, there are three types of search engines. You can think of the search engines as general search engines, meta search engine, and specific search engines. What I mean by general search engines is the search engine is a more wide-ranging search engine that searches millions upon millions of sites for the information. Some examples of general search engines include Bing, Yahoo, and Google. A meta search engine actually uses other search engines to find the information that you need.
You've probably used some sort of website that helped you find the best deal on a flight or hotel booking. A meta search engine is the same way. You enter the keywords and then get a comprehensive list of all relevant sites. Popular meta search engines include Dogpile, Metacrawler, Excite, and Blingo. Abby can use the smaller, more specific search engines that are designed more specifically for the user's needs, such as a periodical database for history and government topics. You can usually get access to different academic databases through a library. Many of these require a subscription to access the resources you need. Some of these databases include Academic Search, Joster, and LexisNexis. Free databases include Astrophysics Data System, Site-Based Search, and Directory of Open Access Journals. There are many databases available for your use, so I encourage you to search for your own. There are two things you must keep in mind when doing any type of Internet research using keywords and using common commands. First, keywords are the ideal words used when typing in a search box. For example, if you are researching the different types of government, a good keyword to use would be types and government. But maybe your speech needs to be more specific. You may want the different types of government structures that exist in the United States, or you want to give a speech over the different government types that exist in the history of England. This type of researching can get overwhelming and confusing. Remember to just pick out the major words that make these phrases important. It is generally not a good idea to put a long phrase into a search engine. For example, if you want to give a speech over the different government types that exist in the history of England, you may want to start searching England government or history of England government. Be imaginative and tenacious in your researching. Try as many different combinations of words as possible and use different search engines to get your research. Second, you need to understand how to use common commands when doing research. This is a list of the most commonly used commands when researching. Quotation marks, addition sign, subtraction sign, asterisk, or. When Abby has a phrase that she is researching, such as the assassination of John F. Kennedy, where she wants to make sure certain words are always included together in the search, she will need to use quotation marks around the words that need to appear together. Therefore, my search would look like this, the assassination of John F. Kennedy with quotations, to ensure that those words always appear together. Names aren't the only words you can use quotation marks to search. For example, if you were searching the differences between cats and dogs, you may want to make sure that the phrase cats and dogs always appear together. Therefore, your search would look like this, the differences between cats and dogs, in quotation. When you are researching and you need to include a certain word in your search, you will use the addition sign. This will often help narrow the topic area you are researching. For example, let's say you wanted to research information about the special shoes ballet dancers wear when dancing up on their toes. You may decide to research the phrase, toe shoes. However, when you get the search results back, all of the results have athletic footwear that conforms to your individual toes. You are not looking for this type of information. So how do you narrow it down? You can search toe shoes plus ballet. Now you get search results about ballet you find that these specialized shoes are called point shoes and you are able to search from there. When you are researching there. When you are researching and you find that there are certain words that come up in your search results that are not part of your topic, you can use the subtraction sign. This is used to exclude a certain word. Abby is now researching the different types of government. However, she does not want to include governments that are democracy-based. She can research the phrase types of government, subtraction sign, democracy, to make her search more effective. When you can't remember the words of a quote or a phrase, you can use an asterisk to help in your search. For example, if you were trying to remember the word that came after the phrase, a bird in the hand is worth two in the, you would put an asterisk at the end of the phrase to search for the word. You can also use an asterisk in the middle of a phrase, and more than once, like this. A paints a thousand. Sometimes, when you are researching a topic, 
You want information concerning two separate things. In this case, you can use the word OR capitalized in your search. For example, Abby may want to conduct research over the types of government that was happening in either 1800 or 1900 to compare and contrast the two. Therefore, she can use the phrase United States governments in 1800 or 1900. Abby can use the internet to access a vast array of information and resources. Using the internet can be a great way to do research. But there are a few things you need to keep in mind when conducting your research. First, you will use a search engine, which is a program that searches for words and phrases in documents, most often in online articles and resources. There are different types of search engines, including general search engines, meta search engines, specific search engines, or databases. Once you decide which search engine is best for you, you can use keywords to do research. Keywords are the ideal words used when typing in a search box. You can also use common commands to help you in your research. This is a list of the most commonly used commands when researching. Quotation marks, addition sign, subtraction sign, asterisk, or. Using these tips and tricks for researching online will save you a lot of time and frustration. Once you find your research, make sure it has a credible source. Check out our lessons on verifying the credibility of your resources.